Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So we're at a weird place with the RG351V right now. The device has been out for a couple weeks now, but there's no custom firmware that's ready to go for this device yet. But in the meantime, there are a lot of new users who have no idea how to use this device with the current firmware. And while I'm pretty sure that this stock firmware is not going to be the best solution for you a couple months from now, I think it's still useful to do a starter guide to talk about what you can do with the current firmware. So that's what we're going to do today. There's actually so much to talk about that I'm going to do two different starter guides. This is the first one here. We're going to talk about how to flash brand new SD cards for your device, how to add your own games and scrape media, and then also how to add and tweak new themes. And so tomorrow I'm going to release another starter guide, and that's going to include how to navigate through Emulation Station and RetroArch, as well as how to configure the screen properly, and then some other emulation tips and tricks to make sure you get the best gameplay out of this firmware. So we have a lot of material to cover, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, let's do a quick orientation of the device itself. Here's the front of it here. You have your D-pad, A, B, X, Y buttons, select and start buttons, a left analog stick that clicks down, as well as a function button labeled as an F. This is basically like an R3 button. It also has a single mono speaker, and then on the bottom, you're going to see two USB ports and a headphone jack. Now, the first port is just an OTG port for peripherals. And then the other one is the same, but also is used for charging. That's going to be your left port when you're looking at the device. On the back, you have L1 and L2 and R1 and R2 shoulder buttons. The ones on the outside are L1 and R1, and the inside ones are R2 and L2. Now you have two SD card slots on this device. One is called the internal card and the other is called the external card. Basically the internal card is going to be your system, the external one is going to be your games. Up top you can see you have a power button and a reset button. In general you only want to use the reset button in emergencies and you never want to power down the device using the power button. On the other side you have your volume up and down. Okay so let's power up the device so you can get a little bit oriented with the stock experience. This device runs a modified version of the Emulec firmware. And unfortunately, they've made so many changes to Emulec that they've kind of broken some of the features of this firmware, which is a shame. And that's why we need custom firmware is because this is somewhat broken. Now, as you navigate through the games here, you can select a system and then pick your games within that. And you might think to yourself, oh, I have all the games I need right here, but it's not so simple. So for example, if we go into the MAME section, which is an arcade emulator, as you're scrolling down, you might think, wow, they have all the games in here. It goes down from A and then to B, but then it basically stops halfway through B and that's kind of the end of the library. So even though there are games on here, they're put on here very lazily and not very well. Say we try to go into another system, for example, let's go into PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16. And you can see here they have numbers in front of all these games. And so that breaks the alphabetical order of everything. And it makes it very, very difficult to remember where each game is. Even if you go into NES, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. The first game is Super Mario Brothers, but then the second one is River City Ransom. And then you're like, okay, there's another Super Mario game next, but that's Mario 3. And then if you go down another one, it says Super Mario 2, but that's actually not Mario 2, that's Mario Lost Levels. You have to go down a couple more to actually find the actual Super Mario Brothers 2. And it has the wrong box art. It has a game from like the Wii U or something like that. But to boot up a game, all you have to do is press the A button. And you just wait a minute and then it'll load up. So here we are with Super Mario Brothers 2. Now to get out of the game, you're going to press down on L3 and then that function button. That'll bring you to the RetroArch menu. We'll get more into that tomorrow in the next video. But for now, just know that you need to go back and then go into Quit RetroArch, and that'll take you back to this main menu. Tomorrow we'll configure it so it's much easier to navigate. Okay, that's really all I want to show you with this version of the stock firmware. So let's go ahead and properly shut down the system. You're going to hit start, and then you want to go down to the quit menu, and then select shut down system. I would think of this device like a computer. You're not going to hold down the power button to shut it off. You're going to use the software to do it. Same thing here. Okay, let's have a look at the two SD cards that came with my device. You may only have one, and that's fine. We'll work through all of that. Now the first card is a 16 gigabyte card here, and this is your system card. This is the one that's going to have the actual Emulex system on it. The other card is a 64 gigabyte card, and that's where you store your game files. Now these cards are very generic, and they fail all the time. So what I would recommend is you buy new cards from a reputable brand like SanDisk or Samsung. Here are two great examples here. This is a 16 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra, it costs about $7. 
And then you have a 128 gig card as well that costs about 20 bucks. And for your games card, you can go all the way up to 512 gigabytes, even up to a terabyte if you wanted to. So next we're gonna take a clean firmware image and we're gonna burn it onto the 16 gigabyte card and then we're gonna load games onto the 128 gigabyte card. So that way we start with an entirely fresh and brand new system. But first we need to take some data off of that 16 gigabyte card because there are certain system files that we need called BIOS files to put onto the other disc. So take your SD card and put it into an SD card reader like this one here and then plug it into your computer. Okay, in one folder I've created just a generic RG351V folder, and within that I'm going to make a folder called Stock BIOS. Now on the 16 gigabyte card, there's going to be a partition called Games, and within there there's going to be a BIOS folder. We're going to take all of those files and move them over to that new folder we just created. And this is going to save us a copy of the original BIOS files so that we can use them later. And other than that, we actually don't need anything else from those two SD cards that came with the device. So I would go ahead and eject them and then go and store them somewhere safe. So now we're going to flash brand new clean firmware onto that 16 gigabyte card that we bought. So in the video description below, I'm going to have a link to the starter guide itself. And there you're going to find a big old link that says RG351V clean stock firmware. Go ahead and click on that. It's going to prompt you to download a file. Go ahead and save it right back in that folder that we created earlier, the RG351V folder. And it's about two gigs altogether, so it might take a minute to download. Okay, so once it's been downloaded, go ahead and extract it. Now we have the base image file, and you can see it's about four gigabytes altogether. Now you need to use a special program in order to flash a disk image onto an SD card. There's a few that are available, Rufus, Win32 Disk Imager, and Belena Etcher. We're going to use Rufus here. And the process is the same for all of these different imagers. All you have to do is select the image you want to flash, make sure that it's pointing to the correct SD card, and then just go ahead and hit start. Usually there's some sort of confirmation you have to do, and after that, you're good to go. It'll generally take about two to three minutes to flash this SD card image onto an SD card. And that's it, now you've flashed the firmware onto this new SD card. Okay, so now we have a system image ready to go but we don't have any BIOS files or games or anything else like that, so we can't actually play anything. So now let's take that 128 gigabyte card, the larger card, and let's prep that for putting games on it. So I just plugged it into my computer. You can see it's showing up there and it has the drive letter of I associated with it. So now we're gonna use a special program called GUI format to format this SD card to FAT32. So here I am confirming it's the 128 gig card. You can see it's actually currently partitioned for XFAT. We're gonna give it the name Games, and then we're gonna format it using this app. And you can see here up at the top now, it now says 128 gigs and FAT32. And that's what we need in order for the device to read this card. Okay, so now we have a blank 128 gig card where we can put all of our BIOS and game files on it. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna move over the folder structure from the 16 gigabyte card over to the 128 gigabyte card. So open up that games partition there, which is completely blank other than these folders itself, and then move everything over except for the system volume information folder. And as you can see here, it's only about 600K because there's no actual data in it, it's just a bunch of folders. So now that it's been moved over, we're ready to go. Let's move the BIOS folder over as well. If you remember, we saved this earlier in the stock BIOS folder that we created. And then you just have to move it over into the BIOS folder of your 128 gig card. Okay, so now we have all the system files that are ready to go. The last piece of the puzzle is to add the actual games themselves. So theoretically, you could actually move over all the games that come with your device. But like I showed you earlier, they're really poorly organized and there's all sorts of issues with them. So I would recommend building your own game library and then moving those files over. And that's what I'm doing right here. If you look over on the left side, you can see a bunch of different systems that I like to add to new game devices. So I'm just gonna move some of these folders over. So for example, the Final Burn Neo folder, I'm gonna move that over to Final Burn Neo. And so on and so forth. You just keep moving things over into these folders. If you have any question about what game system correlates to what folder, I would recommend you go to the written guide, which I have linked in the video description, which will break all that out for you. This part always seems daunting to newcomers because you're like, man, how do I move all these files over? And unfortunately, I can't tell you where to get these files or how to do any of this stuff, but a quick Google search will knock all that out for you.
Okay, so at this point, we've moved over all of our game files. We have our BIOS files moved over to the 128 gig card. Everything's good to go. Let's go ahead and eject all these cards and let's put them into our device. Okay, so I'm putting the 16 gigabyte card in the first slot and then the 128 gig card in the next one. And here we are, here is the default system interface. And this might look a little weird to you because it doesn't look like what it looked like when you first got your system. Let me show you how to change that real quick. So you press the start button to come into the main menu and go down to UI settings. And then under theme set, just change it to the elect full solo horizontal one. And then hit B to back out. And there you are. Here's the default one that you're probably used to when you first get your device. Okay, the first thing I recommend you do once you have this nice clean firmware is to go and set up your network settings. So you go into the main menu again, go to network settings, and then enable Wi-Fi. Now under the Wi-Fi SSID, you should see a bunch of different Wi-Fi networks near you. Just pick out your Wi-Fi network and then add the password. And when you back out, it'll say something like Wi-Fi enabled. And then if you go back into network settings, you can see you're connected and it'll show you the IP address. Okay, so if you go into any of your game folders now, you'll see there isn't any box art or videos or anything else like that. So let's set that up now. This is done through a process called scraping. So you're going to go into the main menu and then select scraper. And then within here, you're going to see all your different scraping options. Keep it on screen scraper and then select all the things you want. Usually what I do is I just keep everything at default and then I like to remove the fan art. Now it's going to ask you for a username and password. You're going to want to go to a website called screenscraper.fr and sign up for a free account. And once you have that free account, just go ahead and put in your login details here. This will make scraping much more stable and easier. So just select the scrape now button, and then you can filter out what systems you want to scrape and what you don't want to scrape, and then you hit start. And then you basically just kick back and let everything download. There are other ways to do this. You can actually do it on your computer, but I'm going to save that for a different video. So here we are after we scraped everything, and you can see now we have nice box art, and if you wait a moment, you actually see a video pop up as well. But to be honest, I've never been a fan of this default theme. I think the text is too big, it just looks a little bit weird. I hate that the game names are cut off like this. So let's try out some different themes and get a better feel for our device. So if you go down to the main menu and into updates and downloads, and then go into the theme section, you'll see a bunch of themes that are available for download. And some of these actually don't work, but others you'll be able to just select and download. So let's just pick one here. I like this one that's called Elecful MU Elec. And after you select it, it'll download it and then install it. And it'll take a minute, but then it'll inform you when it's ready to go. So go back into UI settings, and then under theme set, you can see there's an additional theme there now. So let's select that one and see how it looks. Okay, so this is what this theme looks like. But if you see, it's kind of squished looking, and that's because this theme is made for 16x9 displays, not a 4x3 display like we have on this device. So that one's going to take a lot of tweaking to get right, and that's way more advanced than what we're going to do in this video. So instead, let's test out how to manually install a theme that we like ourselves. So let's go back into the network settings, and then we're going to make note of this IP address right here. We're going to need it later. Now, ironically, before any custom firmware was made for the RG351P system, I had to figure all this stuff out myself as well. And it's very similar to how it is on the 351V right now. You can see I have a listing of all the different themes that are available now, but then also a bunch that I had found that weren't available on Emulec, but I thought were really neat. So let's download one of those. This one is my favorite. It's called NES Box. So you click on the link and it's going to take you to this GitHub page. You click on the green code link and then select download zip. Okay, and then once you've downloaded it, go ahead and extract that folder. And once you've extracted that folder, you can go ahead and delete the zip files. So now we need to actually get this theme onto our device, and it's not as simple as moving it onto an SD card. We have to use an app called WinSCP to move over things via FTP. So you're going to set up a new session, and this is where we're going to type in that IP address that we noted down earlier. And then the username is going to be root, and the password is emulec. And then just make the connection and confirm any pop-ups that show up. And this will take you to the main system interface on the device itself. Now you want to make sure that you have hidden files enabled, so go into the properties section, and then select panels, and then make sure it says show hidden files. If that's showing, you're good to go. You're going to want to go into the emulation station folder and then themes. And you can see here, those are the three themes that we had earlier. 
Now let's take the NES box theme and then this other one, Crystal, which I had already downloaded as well, and we're just going to move them over. And that's it. This is how you manually install new themes. So really, if you can find any emulation station themes out there and you think they're cool looking, this is how you're going to download them and install them onto your device. You don't have to be limited to the ones that are available in that initial menu. Okay, let's move back to the device and we'll turn on the NES box theme here. And this is what it looks like. Now this theme is a little bit squished as well because it's having to work on a 4x3 aspect ratio, but it still looks pretty nice. But it's not perfect. For example, if you go in and you look at the actual information, you can see that like the player number and the release date, they're all screwed up. So let me show you how to fix that real quick. You're going to go back to our computer, which is still connected to the device via FTP, and then go back to the themes guide, and there's a section that says tweaking themes. If you go in there, you're going to see different ways that you can fix different themes. And this exact example is available here. It's all written out in how to fix it. Basically, you want to go into the themes code, and you want to change a couple numbers so that the text isn't overlapping anymore. In the FTP window, we're going to go into the NES box folder, and then we're going to scroll all the way down to the theme.xml file. We're just going to double click on it and open it. Now remember, this is actually on our device right now. We're going to scroll down with the code until we find two lines of code that talk about something that says MD players and MD release date. And if you remember, those are the two pieces of text that were overlapping. So if you see, there's a line that says position and then two coordinates. So let's change the X coordinate, which will move it to the right a little bit. So let's move it from 93 to 98. So we're going to move it over five units. Okay, and then once you've made that change and saved the file, let's go ahead and restart emulation station. And let's go back into one of these folders and see how it looks. And look at that. Now we can see that players and the release date work perfectly. So that's just a quick example of how you can tweak these themes to look right on your device. And I know that's kind of advanced, but I thought you would want to know how to do that. Okay, let's talk about other things you can do in the user interface to improve your experience. So go back into the UI settings in the main menu. And then one of the things I like is the start on system. This allows you to choose which system starts up when you first boot up your device. For me, I like to run NES first. You can also mess with the system's display. You can either hide or show whatever systems you want. Now just bear in mind, you have to have games in the game folder for these systems to show up. And finally, let's talk a little bit about screensaver. Now by default, it's just gonna dim your screen with a screensaver, but you can change it to random video. It's one of my favorite features. And within here, you can tweak the features of the video itself. For example, I like to see the game info, but I don't like to see the marquee, and I like to mute the audio while the screensaver is running. The last thing you want to do is make sure screensaver controls are enabled. And then all you have to do to start up the screensaver is you can wait five minutes, or you can hit select and then select start screensaver. Now, once the screensaver starts, you can just hit select to go to the next game. And you can kind of toggle through your games in a video menu this way, in a random order. Now, if you find a game you want to play, you just go ahead and hit start and it's going to boot the game up for you. This is by far one of my favorite features of this emulation station interface is the ability to have random games showing and then just be able to start that game right then and there. All right, everyone, that's it for the first part of this starter guide. That was a lot of information I packed into less than 20 minutes here, and I hope it was helpful for you. As a summary, we went over how to flash new SD cards, how to add your games and media to your device, and then how to use and tweak new themes. Now be sure to tune in tomorrow for starter guide number two, where I'm going to show you how to use the emulation station and RetroArch interfaces, how to configure your screen so you get the best picture possible, and then some emulation tips and tricks to make sure you have the best performance available for this stock firmware. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!